Winchester City in FA Vars action, some good news for Winchester Rugby, and in ice hockey, were Basingstoke Bison struck by lightning? Hello and welcome to Sports Week. I'm Judy Cordy. Winchester City's impressive league form sees them near the top of the table, but at the weekend they turned their attention to the FA Vars in Oxford Town, with this year's final being held at Wembley Stadium. Sam Ashton was at this local derby to see if Winchester could progress to the next round. An early Chris Mason corner bypassed both sets of players to get Winchester off to a great start. And almost straight away, Dominic Allen made it two with an emphatic finish. Yes! A goal line clearance prevented Winchester from completely running away with the game. Before the crossbar played a part in keeping the scoreline respectable. But there was no stopping Jamie White, who made it three with a poacher's finish. Yes! Charlie Smeaton scored Winchester's fourth before half time, thanks to a perfect ball from Allen. White was unlucky not to add to his tally after this fantastic passage of play. White picked up his 13th goal of the season with a delicate finish to make it 5-0. Well AD Dillanugaraid added to the embarrassment in the 83rd minute with his unfortunate own goal, leaving goalkeeper Chris Waller dismayed. Alsford grabbed a consolation in stoppage time with this headed goal from Mike McKenna, but it wasn't enough, and the game finished 6 1 to the visitors. Sam Ashton for Winchester News Online. AFC Totten have injured some patchy form as of late and were looking to regain some consistency on Tuesday night against Cambridge City in the league. Mikey Smith reports from the Testwood Stadium. It was the visiting Cambridge City who started a brighter on Tuesday's top of the table clash with Jamie Gold firing the Lily Whites into the lead after 23 minutes. Totten looked to be missing their tallies with Mike Gosney, but the delivery from Nathan Jack for the Totten equaliser was one that Gosney would have been more than happy with himself. Nathan Campbell putting his name on the score sheet. But it was Cambridge who ended the first half of a flourish. Craig Hammond heading home after being teed up by Joey Abs, much to the light of the travelling City fans. And Hammond found the net again just five minutes into the second half. Another well-played header after Sierra Leone International Armand Deans looping cross. FC Tottenham rallied though and did pull a goal back on 66 minutes. Jack turning from provider to scorer to set up a grandstand finish. The Stags came close to equalising in the final minute, but Cambridge held on and now lie just two points below Totten. Marky Smith for Winchester News Online. Basingstoke's great start to the season sees them fighting in the playoff places and a victory on Tuesday could see them rise to second in the league. Stainstown were the visitors and Jake Gable was at the game. Hello, you join me tonight from a very wet and windy Camro Stadium as Basingstoke Town face Stainstown in the Blue Square South. Basingstoke in impressive form recently and they come up against Staines this evening. Striker David Pratt will no doubt be looking to add to his recent impressive goal scoring tally. Midfielder Sean McCauley in the starting lineup for this one and he'll be hoping to carry on his hot streak. Now let's take a look at the team lineups. Ashley Bays continues in goal for Basingstoke this evening and we've got a back four of Smart, Little, Parminter and Gasson. 
Stuart Lake, Wes Daly, Matthew Warner, and of course there, McCauley as well, making up the midfield. And that's a front two of Delano, Sam York, and David Pratt. Former Eastleigh striker Mark Nawakaji will spearhead the Staines attack. It was Basingstoke who started the brightest. Matt Warner testing Louis Wells in the Staines goal with this early effort. And after a drab first half, the home side were awarded a penalty after the restart. Sean McCauley going down after a scrappy tangle in the six-yard box. It was McCauley himself who took the spot kick, firing home on the rebound. But Staines were far from finished, first coming close to an equaliser with this curling free kick, and with just five minutes left to play, the visitors were awarded a penalty of their own. Mark Nawakaji bundled over by last man Taylor Parmenter, who was dismissed for his challenge on the former Eastleigh striker. Substitute Mark Charles Smith stepped up to take the kick, but his effort was brilliantly clawed away by Bayes in the Basingstoke goal. But with just one minute of the 90 left to play, Charles Smith made up for his earlier miss, slamming home from 15 yards to level the scores at one apiece. So it's ended one all at the Camrows here this evening. Great save at the end there, courtesy of Ashley Bayes, keeping the scores level. I'm joined by Ashley now. Ashley, great save at the end there. Yeah, um, that's what I'm there for, isn't it? Save the ball. Um, we were disappointed tonight um, in the way we played. We are happy to take a point at the end of the day because we didn't play well. And uh, we know there's a lot more to come for us, but he's carried on on to 13 games now. So, uh, yeah, we we're, we're delighted in the end because um, they, they play very well. Credit to Staines, to be fair to them. You, uh, you mentioned there, Ashley, a uh, great run of form you're on at the minute, Basingstoke. Uh, you seemed a little bit under the cosh in the first half, particularly from set pieces, corners. Yeah, I mean, you, like I say, you you got to give Staines credit. Um, they came at us tonight, uh, which we expect. Now we're on a good run and we're up there. We're there to be shot at. Another goal for uh, McCauley in the midfield tonight. Ash, he's uh, doing well this season. Yeah, Mako, he's coming like me, start of the season, and um, he's, in, he's in a rich vein of form. So uh, long may it continue. So, yeah, brilliant. Jake Gable, Winchester News Online. Isley manager Ian Bell has been under huge pressure after poor league form and the exit from the FA Cup. But the weekend saw second place Welling United come to Hampshire. They'll go on also whether Welling could put Bert's future at Eastley in jeopardy. Eastley hosted second place Welling United on Saturday and expectations were low with the home side coming into the game on the back of three straight defeats. Montgomery steps over it and it's going to be Jamie Slabber straight into the wall but Green has hit it and it's 1-0 to Eastley. What a return to the Silver Lake for Mike Green. Flicked on my sample, Wilson, just wide. And Wilson will think he should have scored. Ian Baird has been under fire after the Spitfire's recent run of form and with the game finally poised, he brought on Jordan Holder Spooner to try and secure the win. Shortly after, the away side were reduced to 10 men with Joe Healy receiving a second yellow card for simulation. And it wasn't long before Spooner capitalised to add to Welling's misery. Still Holder Spooner. And he lays it off for Gillespie. And it's 2-0 to Eastley, a fantastic breakaway goal. Looked like the chance had gone, but Jordan Holder Spooner knew exactly what he was doing, and the finish from Gillespie was emphatic. The game was secured in the 83rd minute, Holder this time Graham Montgomery firing Montgomery. home. Oh, and it's quick feed from Montgomery, and it's a chance for a shot here. And it's a goal. The Spitfires are in dreamland. It's Eastley 3, Welling 0, and Graham Montgomery has really risen to the occasion here today. Even Ian Baird nearly cracked a smile. Danny Smith was unlucky to not have extended Eastley's lead here, but the game ended 3-0. After the game, Ian Baird praised his team's attitude. I knew that, that I would get a reaction. Uh, people have said it was a, a disastrous uh, result. Well, I would agree with it's a poor result. I didn't think it was a disastrous performance. Uh, people have criticised that. Well, they always do. And as we all know, it, it doesn't matter whether Ian Baird's a manager or, or Alex Ferguson's a manager. Uh, they all get criticised. And if you can't take the criticism, uh, don't be involved in football. So, you know, it's one of those things. Results are important, aren't they? Now to rugby. Winchester's league campaign has started brightly this season and now the club has received an extra boost to maintain their facilities. Henry Lewinsett explains. Winchester Rugby Football Club has been awarded a maximum of £50,000 over a three-year period as part of Sport England's Protecting Playing Field scheme. 
This funding will help Winchester renovate their pitches and make them more durable in the future. It's something that the club's been trying to obtain for a long time, is proper funding for our pitches. They're very heavily used, and we're delighted to have them. Uh, it is a very busy club. We have, I think it, we've calculated 35,000 um, uses of this club in the last 12, year, last 12 months. That's including the pitches that we use on the City Council Park there. So it's nice to have some funding to actually restore the pitches to what they need to be to have that sort of wear. A statement from Sports England says, The project will fund the restoration and improvement of three pitches and two training areas. This award will be used to repair the damaged areas, enabling them to be used by the wider community for years to come. The major changes the club has planned are to install an irrigation system, improve drainage and reseed the pitches with a more durable type of grass. If we can get this project right, it'll be a lot more robust and we'll be able to go on expanding and go on helping the other organisations in the community. This money from Sport England has come at exactly the right time when the club on the, on the pitches is on its way up, in the clubhouse is on its way up. Henry Lewin Tit for Winchester News Online. And finally this week, Beijing Sook Bison hosted Milton Keynes Lightning at the weekend with the home side looking to climb the English Premier League table. Michael Connolly reports from Planet Ice Arena to see if the Lightning could strike down Basingstoke. Milton Keynes Lightning travelled to the Planet Ice Arena to face the Basingstoke Bison, who will be looking to stabilise their erratic league form. And although the hosts had the early chances, it was Milton Keynes who took the lead through Lee Jameson at 13-27, after a mix-up between two Bison players. And only a minute later, Basingstoke thought they had equalised, but the referee decided the goal had moved before the puck had crossed the line. Our replays show that the referee might have just got this one correct. Milton Keynes pressed early in the second period, but were denied by the Bison stopper. The Lightning netminder also saved well to deny Basingstoke's Steve Moria. And into the third period, the Lightning netminder seemed to get even better, repeatedly denying the Bison stampede. With saves like this, it was no wonder both teams' netminders picked up Man of the Match awards. The Lightning's Alex Metam's 38-save shutout kept the Bison from scoring a solitary goal and helped Milton Keynes to their 1-0 victory. Michael Connolly, Winchester News Online. And that's all from us this week, but do remember, for more award-winning news and sport, don't forget to log on to winall.co.uk. Thank you, and we'll see you next time.